God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Wow. Wow. Or as other churches say, amen. I know, I know it's hard for Presbyterians to do that, but, but amen. Um, welcome everyone this morning. It is great to see everybody with us. If you're a visitor with us, we extend you a warm welcome and we appreciate you coming and worshiping with us on today. We encourage you to sign your name in the friendship pads as they come down the pew and uh, take a look and see who's worshiping with you and you can greet one another by name following the service today. I'll also call your attention to the different announcements that are in the bulletin today. And uh, you will see that we have a lot going on in the life of our church this week for some strange reason. Any guess as to why that is? It's Holy Week. That's right. Today is Palm Sunday, which means that next Sunday is Easter. Easter, yes. So you want to come early and make sure you get your seat for all of those Easter and Christmas folks that show up next week. But we do have a lot going on and we encourage you to, uh, to, to come and get involved in our church. There are also little purple uh, um, inserts I think that we put in last week and, uh, and there's some in the lobby with a little magnet and you can put it on your refrigerator and you can see the things that are going on in the church. We encourage you to come and get involved in our church. But for now, for now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. A symbol is, is something that reminds us of something else. This Sunday, our Lenten symbol is the lamb. Please notice the lamb on this banner and this little stuffed lamb, which has been in the lobby as we count down the 40 days of Lent. In the Old Testament, a blood sacrifice was required to cover a sin. Sometimes an innocent little lambs were slaughtered to pay the price of someone's wrongdoing. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid a final price to cover all of our sins. He became a sacrificial lamb for you and for me. John 1.29, the next day 
John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Today we extinguish six candles on our Lenten journey. John said of Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, Jesus is our Lamb, Lamb a, sacrifice a sacrifice in our place. Peter tells us that we are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Jesus, Jesus is, is our Lamb, our, our Redeemer. In Revelation, we hear the angelic chorus proclaiming, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Jesus, Jesus is our Lamb. He is worthy of our praise. You may be seated. So here's a quiz question for you today. Would you rather, this is the thing that my son does all the time, would you rather, would you rather pet a ferocious badger with teeth and claws or would you rather pet a sweet, cuddly little lamb? I'll give you a few minutes to decide. <laughs> but God 
is said in Scripture to have come into the world as a lamb. Gentle and meek, approachable, warm and gracious. This is how we are to envision our God after we have sinned. Not as a ferocious badger that's about to rip off our finger, but instead as a gentle lamb saying, I will provide warmth for you. Just come. So God calls each of us to come in this way. So that we can lay at God's feet the burdens upon our shoulders. The ways that we have missed the mark, we have sinned against God. And the way that we doubt and struggle. Bring them here today. As we pray our prayer of confession first together. And then our personal prayer of confession silently. Let us pray together. God, we come together today both to celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and to prepare ourselves for Jesus' trial, crucifixion, crucifixion, and burial. It is a week full of emotion. We wonder how those who knew and loved Jesus best could possibly deny betray, and desert Him. But deep down, we know how. We were human, and let fear get the best of them. We do that too, God, every day. We know that You love us, but sometimes You seem to far away. Help us to trust in You when we are anxious and turn our lives over to Your will. This we ask in the name of Jesus, for whom every knee shall bow. Amen. And just like that, God wipes away the sin of the world by the sacrifice of a gentle lamb your sins are made clean let's celebrate today the goodness of God the forgiveness that comes through Jesus Christ and the new life that we find having laid all of the weight upon his feet Today, we are forgiven.
I invite you to be seated and I invite the children to come forward with a time with the younger church. Miss Amanda is going to lead us. Good morning, guys. How is everybody this morning? Good, you guys did awesome waving the palms. That was great. Raise your hand if you know a king. You do? Like personally? Okay, Jesus? Any other types of kings that you know? Anybody else? You think you know a king? Tell me. Who is it? God. God, okay. Any others? What do we think about when you think of the word king? Are they wearing a crown? Yeah. Maybe they just have symbols of royal royalty. Maybe they're wearing a robe. Do you think they're like walking on a red carpet? They're a king? Do you think they live in a big castle? Soul or mansion if they're king. Yeah, that's what I envision as a king. Royalty. But do you think Jesus had all of those things? Jesus didn't have a big castle or mansion or red carpet that he was walking on or um he didn't even have anything to ride on. The disciples had to go find what before he entered Jerusalem? A donkey. It wasn't even his. It wasn't even his donkey. Do you think everybody typically likes a king? Yeah? No, not everybody liked Jesus. And he is the king that we're talking about. He had lots of followers, but he also had people that didn't like him. Um, in the Bible, it says he was despised by some people. He was rejected. Lots of people really hated him. But those that loved him, they came out and laid their clothes on the ground. They waved these palms and laid them out before his donkey to honor him and to praise him and to worship him and to show him how much they loved him. So Jesus walked into Jerusalem on Sunday, Palm Sunday. And this is the beginning of the Holy Week. And what are we preparing for this week? You say it out loud. Easter. What else are we preparing for? Yeah, we're at, this is Palm Sunday, and it's considered the Holy Week. So Jesus is getting ready to have the Last Supper with his disciples. He's getting ready to be arrested, isn't he? And to be crucified and nailed to the cross. Why did he do that? Why, why did God have this plan for him? Anybody know? You guys know. I know some of you know. To save us from our sins. And Jesus even prayed to God and he said, is this the way that, that we have to do this? But he knew deep down in his heart that that was the only way. That was the only way that we could be forgiven for our sins. Now, what are some fun things that go on during Easter? Shout them out. Egg hunts, yes. What else? Candy, yes. Anything else? Baskets of stuff, goodies from the Easter Bunny. Rufus saw the Easter Bunny yesterday, didn't you, Rufus? Um, yes, Easter brings along lots of celebrations, but we can't forget why we truly celebrate Easter. So in just a second before you leave, you're going to grab an egg. And so the challenge is to keep this egg. Sophia, you already have one from my class, but... 
I want you to keep this particular egg inside your basket. So for all the egg hunts that you do, don't take this egg out, okay? And then you can fill up your, your basket with other eggs during your Easter egg hunts. But when you go to open this one, guess what? It's not going to have candy. It's going to have a little poem that reminds you the true meaning of Easter. So this is what it says. The Easter egg is hollow. What does that mean? It's empty, just like they found the tomb. For it is meant to represent that Christ has risen for you. So, in all those Easter hunts that you may have this week and leading up to next week, let's just remember the true reason we celebrate Easter. And that Jesus, Rufus, can you put those up? Thank you. That Jesus, um, he entered Jerusalem knowing what was going to happen to him. But he still came because he loved his people and, and he was faithful to his God. All right, let's end with a prayer, okay? Dear God, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross to save us for our sins. This week, as we enter Holy Week, please let us remember the true meaning of Easter. Through all the fun and celebrating, um, may, we, may we remember how Jesus died on the cross for us. In your name we pray, amen. You all don't get to see all the fun stuff that goes on up here while things are going on out there. And I love seeing Rufus follow his mom around here as she's doing this. It's just absolutely pre precious. And he, went, he, he was up here checking all the eggs to make sure that they only had a piece of paper in them um, before, before they handed them out. But uh, he did a good job. Today we are so blessed by... Our lovely children. Hey, hey, Lyle, how are you? Thank you. Hey, buddy. Good job. No, you're good. You're good. But we are so blessed, isn't it, to have these children in our space, to hear their sounds, their excitement, their energy. We are excited in the, all of the many ways that God blesses us. And today, we're excited that God has blessed us with new family members. That God is sending to us two new families with us. One family has four little children, which we are real excited about. And uh, we got, they've already been involved in the life of our church. And we're so excited uh, to have you here even more. And, uh, and maybe you won't be quite as scared of me up here every time I come up to her in Noah's Ark. She's like, oh no, it's Pastor Kyle. <laughs> But, uh, but today, the session has, uh, has approved and excited about bringing in um, a, the new family. This is um, Ernestino and Lizbeth Ortiz are coming, and they're, three, or they're four children. So we invite you to come up and join me up here. And as they're coming up, we're also excited that Scott Arrear is, uh, is joining us today. And uh, Scott's been working with our youth program and has been doing a great job for our church. So you can come on up as well. And uh, we're just so excited to see you all here on this, on this Sunday morning. Well, this morning I ask you as you come into our church to profess your faith as is presented during our baptisms as well, the profession of our faith answering these questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world, do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love, will you? Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, will you? Wonderful. 
Let's, let's go to God in prayer. God, we are so thankful that you send us wonderful family members. And we are so excited to have them as part of our family. Lord, lay your hand upon them today. Equip them with the gifts that you have for the work in store for them here at First Presbyterian and the work for your church universal. Give them the desire to follow you and to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, sharing his love in the world. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Welcome. 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 Good. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey, welcome. Good job, buddy. Good. Amen. In thanksgiving for these gifts from God, from God and the many other gifts that God showers upon us every day, let us enthusiastically give back to God to be a part of this great thing that God is doing here in this place and in the church universal. Let us give now graciously. Thank you. 
Gracious God, we're thankful for the ways that you have moved and worked in our life. And as we return this Thanksgiving, as giving of these resources back to you, may we also give our very hearts and that you use us and these for your glory. That the goodness that we have known may not just be contained within our own heart, but shared with the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Generally on this day, which is, as we've said, Palm Sunday, we read a very familiar story, the one where Jesus is entering into Jerusalem on a donkey. And as he comes in, the people line the streets with palm branches and cheer him on, riding along. Today, however, we turn to a different passage, and that is found in the Old Testament from the prophet Isaiah. In this particular passage, we find the prophecy of the one who will come as the Messiah, the one who will be riding on a donkey. Today, we turn to Isaiah 53. Let's listen in for this Great word of God. If you'd like to follow along with me, it's on page 683 in your pew Bibles. And we'll be looking through it during the message today. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of a dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he was born our grief. And carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken. Smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement. That made us whole. And with his stripes. We are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Can we go to God in a word of prayer? Speak today, O God, we pray. In this moment, through this imperfect messenger. So that he may be transparent and we may see only you. We open our hearts, O Lord, that you may come in. And we pray that you visit us here. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There has been a new singer that has come onto this scene for... Christian music in the past couple of years. 
And something has caught fire with this girl that has sent her straight to the top of the charts. In fact, she's done so well, in fact, she has done something that is very rare in that she has been singing in the Christian community, but has made it into popular music as well and pop radio. She came and sang in Greenville just a couple of months ago, and she sold out the venue within just moments, and they immediately booked her for the next year in a venue twice the size of where she was this year. Something has caught fire with this girl. Her name is Lauren Daigle, a name that may or may not be familiar to you, but one I encourage you to take a look. There's been speculation as to why she's done so well. One is that her voice is beautiful. She carries with her this great New Orleans kind of jazzy sound to her voice. She has a great demeanor and personality. But I think there's something far deeper involved with her success. In fact, when she was interviewed a couple of years ago about her first album, she shared a part of her story that I think answers the question why she is so successful. She said, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with this illness called cytomegalovirus. It was immune deficiency, so I was homebound for about two years. It was in that season that God started to show me God's character. An indication of how she encountered her God. Later on, she reflected then that illness came back upon her yet again. And she says, I was diagnosed then with Lyme's disease and some autoimmune stuff, she says, like lupus. That was one of the most difficult seasons of my life as well. It was so painful. Every day was just really hard to wake up because your body is in such chronic pain. Maybe some folks here can relate to that pain. But in her big single song, the real reason as to why I think she has found success comes out not in her voice, but in her lyrics. And the fact that she sings what we feel. In the song, You Say, this is what she says. I keep fighting the voices in my head that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. The only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth. In you I find my identity. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me, oh, I believe. Taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet. You have every failure, God. And now also you have every victory. It's clear to me why she grabs the hearts of so many. Because she does something very different from what we see from these great entertainers of ours of today. The difference is most of our entertainers stand up and proclaim their greatness. I'm strong, I'm great, I'm beautiful, I'm a great singer. I'm a great entertainer and dancer. I can do all of these wonderful and great things. 
But it's not until someone who's real, who has been through despair, stands and sings of her pain that grabs the hearts of all of us. Because finally we hear our voice there. We know what it feels like to be there. We know what it feels like to be in pain and despair and discomfort. We know oh so well. In another of her songs, Trust in You, one particularly powerful for me in a season of my life a couple of years ago. She says, letting go of every single dream. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I've tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight, no matter what I face, you're by my side. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't put the waters I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers as I cry out to you. I will trust. I will trust. I will trust in you. Truth is, you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So in all things, be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. What she reveals is something that we all work so hard to hide. You see, she reveals that life is hard. And it beats you up. And your dreams don't seem like they can come true anymore. This isn't exactly where we thought we were going to be. This isn't the life that I thought I was going to live. And so what happens over time is as we are beaten down with life, as we struggle, as we are shaken, we take all of those things and our world says... Take all that stuff and shove it down deep inside. And then show the world that you're strong, that you're great. Get dressed up, do your hair and your makeup. Maybe, maybe not the dudes so much, but show on the outside your great beauty. Show on the outside that everything's fine. If you were to walk down the hallway and see someone coming from the other direction, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm great. And you keep on passing, knowing that both of you are lying. There's nothing great. Well, there may be something great. But there's a lot of other stuff going on on the inside. We are all bruised where the world can't see. beauty here today is that we are celebrating the entry of someone into our lives who knows all too well what it means to be bruised. We turn to the great prophet Isaiah who tells of the one who will come and will set us free. But he comes in a different way than what we would expect. He comes with bruises. It says he's going to grow up and he's going to be of the root from just this plain old dry ground out in the middle of this town that nobody's heard of, Bethlehem. And then he's going to come and he's going to have a body that is not going to be what everybody's all attracted to. You know, not like the way that the movies portray Jesus with those 
crystal blue eyes and flowing curly hair. This is not the person that came in Christ Jesus. Jesus was ordinary every day. The text says someone that no one, no one is drawn to with great beauty. We often know what it feels like to look in the mirror and say, oh, I wish I had something different that looked about me. I wish that my face were different. My hair was different. I wish that my body was a different shape. I wish I looked totally different like those people in the magazine that are done fake with Photoshop. I want to be like that. But the prophecy says this guy is going to come and he's going to be just like you and me. He's going to be despised and rejected. He's going to know sorrows and be acquainted with grief. He's going to be despised and stricken and smitten and afflicted. He's going to be oppressed. The list just goes on and on. All the things that that happens to Christ. And then we get to verse 6. It opens a little window. It says, all we, that means you and me, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one of us to his own way and the Lord has laid him down in the iniquity of us all. We've all gone astray. But this one has laid down. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. And yet. He opened not his mouth. Remember that story. That prophecy. When he's being convicted. He doesn't open his mouth. To speak his case. And then this next line. Like a lamb. That was led to the slaughter. And like a sheep. That, that before its shearers is silent. I've often asked, and maybe you have too, why a lamb? I mean, that's really what was so confusing when Christ came. They were expecting a king, they were expecting a lion, they were expecting someone strong and big. Just like King David that would be able to come with armies and be able to wipe out all of the enemies. They were expecting God to come and rescue them in great chariots of fire. But instead, God comes in the form of a lamb. Disciples are so confused. What do you mean you're leaving? I mean, we've got to get your throne ready, your crown and your jewels. And Jesus says, I'm not into all that stuff. God says, it would be easy for me to come and show my power. God could show his power just by a clap of lightning and thunder outside of the window. And every one of us would shake today. That's easy for God. But God says, I'm coming in Christ to show you something very different. That I know you hurt. That I know what it feels like. That when you cry, I cry too. That when you feel alone, I know what that feels like. All my disciples denied me. Christ came not to show power. But to show you he knows the hurt you have inside. Then we come to verse 5. And in verse 5, we find here the first word here, my favorite word in the whole Bible. My favorite word shows up right here. It says, after talking about all of the pain and all of the suffering and all the oppression, all the things that Christ is going to have to go through, being smitten and being afflicted, all of those things, this great list, we get to verse 5 and it says, But, but, that's the word you need to put up on your window, but. Now that's B-U-T. 
to remind you that when life has served me the wrong thing, when I question, when I doubt, when I struggle, God says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities and upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and with his wounds. We are healed. You see, we want to hide all of those bruises deep down inside, but God wants to get them out. God wants to show you, I understand how painful this is. I want to take this from you. I want to remove this pain, these lost dreams. This hurt, this doubt, this anxiety, this fear, this shame. I want to take that from you. Don't hide it anymore. Don't press, repress it down and just try to be strong and still win and fight this thing. That's not what Jesus told us. Jesus said, hand it over. And I will set you free. In her song, Rescue, Lauren Daigle says this. You are not hidden. There's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not hopeless. Though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS, and I will send out an army to find you in the midst of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you wherever you are. God will find you. How deep you are, how dark the place is, how much pain you have faced, how much you hold deep inside, God will find you this day. As he processes into the streets of Jerusalem, walking straight into the pain, he says, hold on just for a moment. moment. I'm about to fight for you. I'm going to the cross So that you don't have to bear pain anymore. I know your weakness. I know your pain. Come to me. And I will set you free. Amen. Friends, in all of the confidence, all of the confidence that sometimes we struggle to find. Now is our moment. Now is our moment to confess our faith and proclaim that we have our eyes set on the one who can give us real life. Let's take a moment now. If you're ready to confess your faith, to stand and let us say together our confession as printed in our bulletin today using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
May the peace of the Lord be with you. Today, following the service, I encourage you to turn and share the peace with one another. You know, you could look to the person next to you and they may look rough and angry and mean and they might not look like they want your peace. But let me tell you, deep down, right up under the skin, they're a bruised person who needs that love and that encouragement. And so, as we leave today, let us take with us the hope That we are not a broken people that cannot be fixed. But in the grace of Jesus Christ, we have the blessing of forgiveness and life eternal. Go now in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.
he says that he's going to be giving a process. Oh, next okay. Year, next year. Okay. Yeah, see, that's what I got last. That's what I got last. Yeah, I get to. I like to be big enough for this. You know what I'm saying? I like to be big enough for this.